Hello again and welcome. This is just going to be a very short video. Again off to my left you can see I have the high voltage power supply out. The two meters on the outside are my Brahman BM869S's. To the right we have the Unity UT181A, the two 121GW's, and then this is the Fluke 187. All these meters are capable of reading AC plus DC. Again this is production one and this is production 2. Production 2 is loaded with 2.02 .02 firmware where production 1 has 1.0. This is looking at 61010. Again this is part 2033. This is particular requirements for handheld multimeters and other handheld meters for domestic and professional use capable of measuring mains voltage. I want to refer to section 16.101 over range indication. If a hazard could arise from an operator's reliance on the value, for example voltage, displayed by the equipment, the display shall give an unambiguous indication whether the value is above the maximum positive value or below the minimum negative value of the range to which the equipment is set. Note, examples of ambiguous indications include the following unless there is a separate unambiguous indication of an overrange value. So note B, digital meters which show a low value when the true value is above the range maximum. For example, let's say it's 1001.5 volts and the meter is displaying 1.5 volts. That would obviously be a failure. Conformity is checked by inspection and by provoking an overrange condition. So after I had installed the 1.0 firmware, I was wondering if this meter behaved any different than this one. And it turns out it does somewhat. So let me go ahead and turn on our power supply. So our Bryman on the left, this is set to AC plus DC. And you can see it's displaying 463 volts or so. The AC voltage is 322. The Unity UT181A is also set to AC plus DC. So 464 versus the 464. And you can see it also separates out the AC as well as the DC value. So currently we're driving the meters with minus 330 volts or so DC and 322 volts AC. And you can see both 121s are displaying a negative 334 volts. Our Fluke is set to split display and the top display is minus 334. That's the DC voltage. I know I'm zoomed out quite far. Hopefully this will show up on the camera but this is displaying 322 volts AC. Same thing with our Bryman on the right. The top display is AC, so 322.8, and the DC is a negative 334. So all of these meters are in agreement right now. What I'm gonna do now is just change our bias voltage. You can see I'm adjusting it down. Right there you can see the production 2 meter is switched over and is now displaying 0.8 volts or so. The production 1 meter is still displaying 45, 46 volts. If we look at the Fluke, it's a negative 45 volts or so. And the same thing with the Bryman BM869S. And the Unity is also displaying minus 46.2. So again, all these meters are in agreement except the meter on the right which has the latest firmware. Now let me go ahead and increase the voltage. You can see the production 2 meter is slowly creeping up. Right there. So at 187 volts of bias, the meter just uh, changed ranges. Right there, so 308 volts or so. Uh, the meter starts reading correctly again. What I'm going to do now is just drive this thing low again. And let's see where this meter falls out at, if it does at all. Right there, at roughly 48 volts or so, production 1 also switches down to basically reading 0 volts. Now if I crank up the voltage again, Again, you can see both meters switched at roughly the same point. And if I put it to somewhere in the center, let's say somewhere around 150 volts, 
Let me turn off the power supply. And now let me re-enable it. And you can see all the meters are reading correctly except the two 121 GWs. Again, this is at 60 hertz. Let me just change it over to voltage mode. You can see in the upper right corner, 60 hertz at 319 volts AC. I'm just going to go ahead and bias our voltage positive. And I expect it's going to switch right about here. Yep, sure enough. So the switch point seems symmetrical. Again, let's try adjusting it down and let's see where the two meters fall out at. Again, it looks like 45 volts or so for a production two meter. Again, that's with the latest firmware. And again, it looks like about 37, 38 volts for production one, which again has version 1.0 firmware. Now again, just to be clear, if I were to manually range these meters, there you go. Now these are going to work just fine. You can see, take the voltage up, I can take it down, I can take it negative. The meters don't have any problems at all. So it's definitely something in the auto range function. Of course, I'm not a safety expert. This is certainly not an accredited lab, and those standards are definitely open to interpretation. You can see this meter was independently certified, at least it's marked, by ETL. Personally, I'd love to talk to some of these people that certify these meters. I did a video for that Gauss and Metrowatt meter where the relays could actually change their state with a magnetic strap, and you'd run into the same kind of condition where the meter would display a low voltage in the presence of high voltages. It'll actually activate the relays inside of the meter. You know, and I haven't traced out the circuitry that's in this thing, but I'm sure that those have something to do with the input switching. And, boy, I hope to hell that those relays don't transfer the inputs in some way that you could actually blow up the meter or short it out or whatever by having some kind of magnetic field next to this thing. I mean, is it really the best choice to be putting relays into a handheld meter? It's not like I'm not going to have this thing around a magnetic field ever. Alright, you're not going to believe this, but I thought for sure I had just fried this meter. I haven't done really anything with it. You know, this test that I'm showing here, I'm only putting out, you can see about 350 millivolts AC. The only thing I had done was just uh, the test that I had just shown you, and the meter was working fine before that. All I did was connect up the leads. I turned this thing on and I was getting 30 millivolts. I swapped the leads. This thing was still displaying 30 millivolts. So I tried turning off the meter. Turn it back on. It's still 30 millivolts. <laughs> I mean, unreal. I was all ready to just call it quits and just tear the meter apart. All I did was I switched it to ohms and then I switched it back and the meter started working again. What I think had happened, maybe, is those may be like a latching relay. And what I'm wondering is, is when I hit this thing with that tape eraser, if that actually changed the state of the relay and the meter doesn't have any kind of feedback to know that and that it needs to reset it. Check this out. This is exactly what the problem is. So when I hit that thing with that tape eraser, it does something with the relay, puts it into a state, and I'm probably 50 50 I guess with this but look at this what I'm gonna do is just just to show you there's nothing going on I'll take the lead off of our Bryman and I'm just gonna swap these two see that look at that is that crazy that is fucking crazy you could get somebody killed with this. Look. So this is a uh, this is just a standard outlet. Let's just move some of these out of the way. So there's 120 volts sitting here. It's basically right off the line. I've just got my Probe Master probes here. I'll just show you that this is live. So 
I'm going to attach it to our Bryman. <laughs> See our batteries are dead. Anyway, so of course we're in the millivolt range. You can see 123 volts. Now this doesn't have like a millivolts AC mode, right? So it'll auto range for us, but I'm just going to attach our leads. And this thing before I think read like 4 volts. Look at that. 4.11. I mean you could go, if this meter were in this mode, you walk up to an outlet or a bus bar, you hook this thing up and you think that you have some low voltage and then you grab a hold of something. I mean, can you imagine that? So before I could turn this thing off. And I'm going to turn it back on. Look at that. 3 volts. Unbelievable. You want to talk about a bug. Fuck. Yeah, these Germans know how to design a meter all right. So one of the comments I saw, somebody had basically said, keep your test equipment away from magnets and it won't be a problem. Of course, if you've got an extra 70 bucks to spend on this stupid meter, get yourself a genuine Gaussian Metrowatt hanger for this thing. Of course, I'm not going to spend $70 more on this meter, but I do have this one that came free with the X-Tech meter. I'm not even going to turn the meter on. You should be able to hear this with the camera. Let's just see. I want to show you how far I am away from the meter. Right there. And you see how far I am away from this thing? And that's still tripping up that relay. It'll be interesting when I get this thing apart finally just to kind of see what the orientation of some of the components are. Keep your magnets away from your meter. Of course, don't buy the Goss and Metrowatt strap. Another solution is to just buy a meter that isn't susceptible to magnetic force. Of course, you know, this one being the only one I own that actually is. I thought I'd just give you a quick update as far as what I'm doing with the Goss and Ultra. After I ran the meter at 12,000 volts, I took it back apart. And this was the original shield that I made for the meter. What I was trying to do was basically solder the can to the bottom side of the main shield. And that didn't work out so well. Uh, so what I've done is I've gone back to having the can separate. And I've just kind of bent this thing a little straighter. I made this area here a little bit larger for the Bluetooth area. And I've lengthened this area down in here. You can see this area down here where the slit is is still exposed and accessible. That's because the fuse holder here has this plastic ridge that will fit down through that groove. So I've cut up a new plastic spacer. Again, this will just keep things from shorting out. The original shield was made out of mu metal. This new one is made out of netic. And they're both uh, ten thousandths of an inch thick. The netic is made to handle higher magnetic forces. And that's certainly one of the main properties that we're interested in. So I just had my tape eraser out. I'm about a half an inch away right now. That's not the relay, that's the plate actually vibrating. And again, the standard, I would say there's no way that that thing should have ever been allowed to pass. But somebody let it through. So obviously there's more to getting these meters certified than what meets the eye. It's not as cut and dry as what these standards make it sound like. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you found it useful. Next we'll start working on part 5, so stay tuned. Later.